Public relations and branding are critical in this new digital age for financial advisors. I'm joined today by Marie Swift and Josh Nelson to discuss this topic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Pat. So Marie, explain to us why it's so important to have a strong digital presence for financial advisors. It's really important to have a strong digital presence because without it, you cease to exist in the minds of the people who are trying to find you. You know, recently I was trying to find an advisor and I Googled like crazy and could not find anything, nothing, not a remnant. And so, you know, think of how that lands for your clients, whether it's a strategic partner or prospective client, if they can't find you, you cease to exist. And then on the flip side of that, if you have a bad presence, just think about that bad impression and how that lands with people. It's really interesting. Josh, talk to me a little bit about your story. What have you guys done in terms of developing this digital presence? We went from having a really old, outdated website about five years ago and have come light years with it, not only in that first impression, how people are seeing it when they find us online, but the fact that they can actually find us. Like Marie was saying, in a lot of circumstances, our clients were telling us that they had to go through th several pages of Google before they were able to find our website. That, and I, I think social media, we've embraced that. We brought younger staff in. We brought interns in, in some cases, from universities that would be able to help us with that. And have you seen a turnaround in the practice? Have you seen strong uh, uh, results as a result? Yes, we have. Yes, it's very easy to find us now through various different words. And sometimes we even have our clients and people that don't even live in our area type in some different phrases that would be for a financial advisor, and now they can find us, and they find us really easily on that first page. Now, Marie, you deal with a lot of clients that are facing a lot of these problems, probably not as many as far along as Josh. Talk to me about some of the horror stories of folks that you've encountered. Oh, I talked to a marvelous advisor on the phone. He was articulate, he was organized, he was compelling. When I looked him up online, he had a horrible website. It looked like an unorganized mind. He had different font sizes. He tried to do everything on his landing page. It was just way too much, and there was a lot of jargon. So to me, that's really, it's almost worse than having no presence. Having something that people don't trust you because that first impression is so important. So we're working with that particular advisor to help him reorganize and be more compelling and more professional. So Josh, what have you done to boost your brand? I think this year we've really focused on raising our profile. In a lot of cases we have good stories to tell, but oftentimes we just don't do that because we're busy. So we've really made a focus that, of that this year. One opportunity was that we won the Peak Advisor Alliance Practice of the Year Award. And one of the opportunities that came off of that was that we got to be featured in Times Square on the Jumbotron. And that really was a neat area that we were able to post on social media, on our website. We have a nice plaque up in our office. So through a lot of dis different sources, we were able to tell that story. And it really comes across as a unique opportunity, not only for us to grow our business, but for our clients to tell their friends. So you were featured on the Jumbotron in Times Square. Not a lot of people do that. Talk to me about what that's been like, uh, that celebrity status with your clients. Yes, yeah, it was very exciting. It's very exciting. And again, it's a referral opportunity for our clients. They mentioned that I'm much more referable now, that it's a story that they can tell their friends, they can tell their family, and it makes them feel more confident in working with us. Mm -hmm. Marie, public relations, very important. Talk to us about what advisors can do to develop their presence with the press. Yeah, absolutely. So the best thing that an advisor can do is read the publication, follow that journalist, and show interest in what they're writing about. Just don't pitch your own agenda. Try to sync up with what's really important to that outlet and to that journalist. The most embarrassing thing an advisor can do is to pitch something that's not on that um, journalist beat or that they've just written about. So, you know, being authentic, actually caring about the journalist and what they need to accomplish goes a long way. And it's easier than ever to find out, maybe sign up for some of the free lead services, study the journalist, look on the website, and then send them an email. Which is much better than throwing spaghetti at a wall, That's which right. we find too far too often our inbox is just flooded with that stuff where it doesn't make any sense with us. Josh, what's next? If you were uh, to give some advice to uh, another advisor, what advice would you give them? I think that they should know that it's really a process that is going to require a lot of time. It probably is going to mean that one, if not more than one, of their staff members are going to need to focus on social media, on website, on community presence, and on public relations. So all those areas are going to require a lot more time than many people realize. We found that out early on, and now we're seeing some success. Well, Marie, Josh, thanks so much for taking some time today. Some great insights for our advisors. A pleasure. For Investment News, I'm Matt Ackerman. Yeah.